back to the channel, guys. It's been a whole week since uh, Cleese and Cars Burnout. And we'd like to take a second to welcome all the new subscribers. And definitely all you OG subscribers, too. We thank you guys for watching. Yeah, so if you guys saw the Cleese and Cars Burnout, if you didn't, go watch it. But if you saw it, you'll notice that this thing shut down at the end. And everybody's been asking us, what happened? Is it dead? Well, the short answer is it drove off. It ended up driving out of there and driving on the trailer. But... It definitely has some issues. Uh, the motor kind of seems okay, but we're going to give you a quick update here and kind of go through and figure out what happened to the motor, what do we got to do, and kind of just show you everything that happened out there. I mean, that was a minute and a half of 5,000 RPM on the rev limiter. So yeah. yeah, there's oil all over the engine bay. There was a fire at the end of the burnout, which probably melted some of the wires and the extreme amount of heat under there from the turbo. It was hot. It was for sure very hot. So, yeah, what do you have? 280 degree uh, intake temps? Yeah, it was 280 or 380. Yeah, the data log, uh, the EFI didn't shut it down, uh, interestingly enough. Um, we melted a wastegate line and we did that right after I shifted to third gear because we tuned this whole thing in on six pounds. And we did all our test burnouts on six pounds. Six pounds was safe, you know, we thought it was good. And about three or four seconds after I hit third gear, the wastegate line melted and it made 12 pounds the entire run. So that was a 12 pound run. Wide open throttle. Yeah. Still not a thousand horsepower like Cletus said. Not sure where that came from. I wish it made a thousand, but it was probably making 500 or 550 through that whole run. But once we get it figured out, we're going to turn it up even more. Oh, yeah. So let's figure out what's going on here. All right, guys. So as I said, this wastegate line, I mean, it's still connected, which is probably why it didn't just spike to 30 or 40 pounds, but it's definitely melted half off. This harness melted. The oil drain line back here, I don't know if you can see, there you go. That melted. So we lost that. We lost this wiring harness down through here. This all melted, all the loom. That whole connector there. Pretty sure that one caught on fire. Yeah, it kind of seems like it. This is all melted. And then when it looked like uh, the radiator started blowing off, and all that steam came out the bottom. Turns out, the radiator hose blew off the bottom of the radiator and she drained herself very, very quickly. So that is definitely, I don't know if that wasn't quite tight enough, but it hit 250 degrees and that was when it blew off. So that's definitely something we're gonna have to look into. We're not really a fan of that, that setup <laughs> anyway, but if you're on a time crunch, you gotta do what you gotta do. And next we gotta figure out where the hell all this oil is coming from, because you see oil puddled there all the way down the radiator support and all over the top of the hood so we got to figure that out <clears throat> definitely a lot of oil coming from somewhere yeah that one that one kind of confuses me because there's oil everywhere and uh, there's not an easy culprit for that one maybe out the dipstick I don't, I don't know but that's something we're gonna have to have to figure out here but yep. let's get to it we're gonna do a leak down test, see if we pop the head gaskets or broke a ring or something. So I'm gonna get this downpipe out of here because it kind of makes getting to this whole side of the motor just a real pain. But she looks sweet like that. Hammer right. time. This is off a 2020 Harley Davidson. It still looks like a Harley pipe. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, guys. So we were gonna do this video as seeing, uh, trying to find out what parts we melted, but we're gonna turn into uh, see what parts we did not melt under here. Yeah, we got melted plug wires here. We got an O2 harness back here. That was the back of the head that melted. It didn't go through, thankfully, but I, yeah, it seems like we melted pretty much everything. So I guess we'll keep going and probably find more stuff that's melted. We're going to do a leak down test here, which I've never done before. So I don't know. Have you done one? Nope, me either. All right. So we're both going to learn this together. All right. So we're at TDC right now. Yeah, we're at TDC on number one. Front clip's off. So if you hold that, and then I'll start opening this guy.
Okay, now it's coming up. We'll put 70, I guess. Or I guess we'll do 80. So we got 80 in and about 55 over here. 57. Coming up through the intake, maybe? Oh, well, yeah, that one's not hooked to anything. Yeah, I don't know where it's coming from. I can hear it. Come out of your exhaust. Yeah, maybe. We'll check that cow pipe. Put your ear up to it. Uh, it'd be coming out right there. Yeah, we took that off, didn't we? Yeah. Well, I guess we should probably go see what 80 to 55 says on the book, because I don't, I don't really know. Yeah, that's way down there. Am I reading this right? Yeah, we're at we're at huge numbers. So something is definitely not right. All right, we're gonna do number eight now since number one wasn't great, but couldn't. I don't know. Nothing seemed to be obvious where it was leaking. So we're gonna try number eight and see what we get out of this one. Something's leaking massively over here. Really, this one actually looks better. Yeah, I'm at almost 80, and I'm at about 65 in the cylinder. So I hear something blowing on the crankcase over here. Come over here and put your ear over here. And this is way weaker than the other one. Yeah, she is. She's coming up through. Get the soapy bubbles. Soapy bubbles. Clean the motor. Find the crack. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, these motors are known for cracking heads. So maybe that's what we got going on. I don't uh, know. What was the final temperature? 250 degrees? Yeah, it was 250 when it shut itself down. So we sat there and cooked for 10 minutes after that. Yeah, pretty much. Well, I guess we'll keep going and we'll see what happens. All right, so we're pulling the intake off, and that wasn't black before. That is, I'm gonna take this hat off. Yeah, you gotta work it. That thing is tight. Looks like you're trying to be a snake charmer. All right, I am a charmer. Take that front clamp off. Probably gave you a sock that's too short. You guys all love this trick. Not my tool. I won't do that. That is my brand new. <laughs> that is brand new. <laughs> it's like the first time I'm actually using that little thing. Hammer time. You guys oh. don't know. Oh, you guys dude. don't know this. All these electric tools that come with the built-in hammer on the back. Yeah, not that one. That one's too expensive for that. Dude, look inside that thing. All right, so that's a big oil problem. Is this two-stroke? Uh. Well, it had a self-oiling system, I guess. Because, yeah, that that whole throttle body is just coated in oil. So, we bent in turbo seals? I don't know. Uh, possibly. Maybe that's where all the oil came from. China. But, China. I don't know. Let's, uh... Whew. Yeah, it blew a lot of oil out somewhere. Maybe it was the turbo seals. But, I guess we'll pull the throttle body next and... Try to figure out because we're leaking down on this number one cylinder somewhere and we're not quite sure where yet we sealed some of the other stuff off so we'll pull that throttle body and then we'll try to figure it out all right guys so we just did this leak down test here and we're getting some leaks through the intake and a couple on the back of the engine there so yeah it sounds like it's kind of coming up through the crankcase so i don't know maybe we did cook a ring maybe the heads cracked they're kind of known for cracking heads yep so we're not really sure all we know is the leak down test wasn't a-okay everything's good so i mean it was running fine but i think we're gonna tear the heads off it and put eyes on it and just make sure you know before we go out and really crank this thing up just pull it down and it's probably the safest bet just to give it 
good once over. Yeah, my bet's on, uh, we at least got one bent valve on this side for the intake. Probably chewed up a piece of a piston, I'm thinking. So, that'll do that. Make some, make yeah. your leak down go through your intake. Yeah, I don't know. We'll take a look at it. And I mean, if the short block shot, there's another one sitting out there. If it's just head gaskets or cracked heads, we can pull heads. I got head studs sitting if it needs them. So, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll get these heads knocked off of here and show you what we find. <laughs> Okay, so we got got the turbo off and the up pipe is off and the Y pipe is uh, off and uh, yeah I think we have a problem so if we come down here if you want to take a peek up in there you know that looks like a normal exhaust pipe you know pretty rich but you know she's all right we come to this side and I don't know if you can see that but that is all oil just flooded out oil on that side so I think this passenger side head is uh, probably going to be the one we're going to want to pull first. Because, yep. yeah, something happened on this side. Yeah, I think we fed a piston to the motor. Probably. It's effed up. There's no doubt about that. All right, we got the head bolts out. So now we're going to pull the head and see what she looks like. Wind That's chimes. how we do it, effed up fab. Yeah, we got wind chimes. Right, what's she look like over here? Uh, oily. Very oily. That was destruction. You know, I'm not really seeing anything here. A blown head gasket. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Wow, it torched that head gasket. That might be it. I mean, look at the... Look at the amount of oil <laughs> in that cylinder. Yeah, but... The piston's not broke. I don't see any wear. I'll have to clean them up, but yeah, look at it. it was, I think it was coming right down through here. All right, so here comes the uh, driver's side head gasket inspection. Yeah, we're pretty sure we got, is it number three here? Is that the one that's pushed out up in there? Yeah, oh, she's cooked. Yeah, we're thinking this side's blown too. Yeah, we pulled the push rods out on this side. Yeah, we decided not to throw them on the floor since this motor might not be as cooked as we thought. And yeah, that's another blown head gasket. Right there. Blew one cylinder on both sides. Yep, blew it right up and out into the valley. It was probably sucking oil right in there. Let's see what this piston looks like. I mean, I'll have to wipe it down. Yeah, it's got oil in it, but I don't really see anything in there. Everything looks kind of kind of normal. Yeah, might have just popped the head, both head gaskets. But I mean, to be fair, they were stock replacement Felpros. They weren't even high performance Felpros. Stock head bolts. So they were nothing special. Threw them in there and I mean, I was not planning to run 12 pounds at a, at a minute and a half, so I give them credit for what they did, but we do have studs and some better gaskets sitting. If that's all it is, we'll have to figure it out. But, well, let's clean this thing up and see what happens.
All right, guys, so we spun the motor over. Everything looks good. I mean, it doesn't look like we heard anything except for two very, very blown head gaskets, which honestly is not surprising for 12 pounds of boost for a minute and a half at red line. That's unbelievable. With no water in it because it blew the radiator hose right off the bottom yeah. of the radiator. I'm going to boil all the water out of the motor because there's not a drop of water in this thing. No, it's, it's dry as can be. So, yeah, so we're going to slap these high performance fall pros on there. Everybody says they should hold a lot better. Yeah. And we're not going to run the head bolts anymore. We got some ARP studs. So this thing, I mean, we pushed two cylinders out, one on each head gasket. That's really not bad for stock head gaskets on 12 pounds and the beating yeah. this thing took. So with this, it should take 12 pounds and hold yeah. it. We'll have to try harder next time to blow more. Yeah, we thought it was dead. Well, we thought it was good. Then we thought it was dead. And now we're back to... It's not bad. It's head gaskets. So we're going to slap this thing back together and next time you see it, it's going to be upgraded more than just the motor. So what are you thinking? 16 pounds, 20 pounds of boost? We'll start at 12, probably 15 or so. I don't know. All right. All right, guys, I'm going to try to get them to turn it up faster than that. About 20, 30 pounds. Let's go. Yeah, I don't want to do head gaskets again. But I want to do a motor swap. It's a stock motor. It's got cast pistons in it. I'm mm -hmm. trying not to, trying not to kill it, but head gaskets are... Not bad, so I really want to see how that spare motor runs. Let's get this thing sitting in the weeds out behind the barn. Well, we'll see how this does with studs in it now. Studs and head gaskets, so it won't be a totally stock motor anymore. You know. But, oh yeah, this little motor. All right, she's she's old faithful. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Next time you see us, this thing will be back together, and we'll be making at least twenty pounds of boost.